We're talking about how to pass on our stories, so now we're going to grab some stories from our grandparents that are here. So, you want to get us started? Granny, what was it like growing up in Tupelo area? We carried water from the, the drinking water from the neighbor's house, and they had a big pear tree, and we would snatch pears when we went to go gather water. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought we was going to I went in trouble. Her name was Mrs. Bills. She was coming down the road as we was carrying water and I thought, I've got these pears, you know, and I'm going to be in trouble for, for snatching her pears. Uh, so I dropped the pear in the water and she stopped <laughs> and gave us the ride back to the house, which was probably three blocks, something like that. Uh, gave us a ride to the house and she told me, she said, honey, you can have all the pears you want. You, you don't have to have to you don't have to hide the pears, you know oh, there. Uh, yeah, yeah. Then we, then we grab the pears. Yeah. So. But it was okay living in Tupelo. It was it was hard uh, living at home. I was the oldest of three siblings, younger sisters, and so my mom worked all the time. So I was the one. I was the mama. I was the second mama at home, and so I was the one having to to make sure everybody got up to go to school. Uh, supper was done because mama worked two jobs. And so it, it was, I didn't get to do the runaround life that we grew up really fast. Right, right, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, what was it like growing up for you, Grandma? Well, uh, we couldn't do nothing. We lived right around the corner here. And the school was in that area, just right across from this road. I went to school there from first grade to third grade and then promoted to fourth grade and then after that, they sent us to Allen School. And we had about 30, 40 kids going to school out here. And when we went into uh, like a recess, we'd all start speaking Chickasaws, you know? Because <laughs> everybody could speak Chickasaws. And after we got out over there, that's when they sent us to Allen. That's where I started learning how to speak English, you know? We went to Allen School, come back, then we start talking Chickasaw at home. But on weekends, you know, we'd go to singings, and my brother had that pickup, and we'd all get in there in the back of the pickup. We'd be standing up, going to singing, like around the area, like Ardmore, and just... You rode in the back all the way to Ardmore? Yeah. Oh, my. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, we wow. didn't get tarred back then, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but it was good because uh, when we get to the singing, we had fun talking to friends and walking around. And our parents didn't have to tell us, we're going to church or we're going to go to singing. We knew it, you know. <laughs> and so we knew where we went to church and that's where we were going. They never spoke to us like uh, we were Chickasaws or you're Chickasaw, you're not Choctaw, you're not white. They never said nothing like that to us. But we knew when you're Chickasaw, you know it. You, nobody don't have to tell you. Brother Luther, where were you <clears throat> raised? I was raised in Fillmore, right across the road from the church I attend. Dad uh, raised the garden, and that's part of our food that we had. And he worked, he was a custodian at a public school, which was a half a mile down the road. And uh, we had to walk. To me, when I first started school, that was the longest walk. But today, uh, you know, you can walk it today, and it's not very far. But uh, I, had, I got both sides because the kids, my brothers and sisters, they went to public school. They learned English while they were there and then come home. It was all Chickasaw. So I learned both sides from them and from mom. Mom spoke very little English. And so when they come home, and as a matter of fact, Jerry and Mitachi and them used to live across the road from us. And instead of playing over there in their yard, they was always over at the house. And I think when Jerry uh, mentioned learning Chickasaw, he always mentions my mom. We'd be sitting under the trees at home and uh, sitting there drinking coffee, and it was all Chickasaw. So anything that we did at home, it was pretty much all Chickasaw. Mm -hmm. That's something that is very, very important to me. I try to teach my kids, older kids, but my, I have two grandkids at home. They come over quite a bit. Uh, they'll come, like last night, they were there, and she, the little girl was looking something. I said, Nante Shwil. She said, Grandpa, I can't find this thing. Aww. But they always answer me in English. They understand what I'm saying. Yeah, they understood. And I stress that a lot, whenever, wherever I go, to teach our grandkids and our kids. 
So Kanae Anlegia, wherever I'm at, I stress Chickasaw language a lot. And I'm sure Vera does the same thing. So if you know it, please, please teach your kids because that's what it's going to take for us to hold not only our culture, but that's what we are. We're Chickasaw. The Lord gave us this language and we do not, we don't want to lose that. I wish I had learned the language. My mom was full-blood Chickasaw uh -huh. and she didn't want us to learn. No. She didn't go to school until she was in the fourth grade and it wasn't because she was that smart to be put into the fourth grade. That's the age she was to go to school. Mm -hmm. She didn't know any English and she had a rough time. She had a really hard time. Of course, I can't even imagine going to school and not knowing the language, what the teacher's talking about, you know, anything like that. And it'd be hard. Uh, so she didn't want us to go have the hardship that she had. Mm -hmm. She wants us to be raised in a white man's world where it would be easier on us. And now it's kind of backfired to where I wish I had learned. She did when my aunt would come over, Monette Greenwood, Mama kind of brightened up just speaking, speaking language, mm -hmm. speaking Chickasaw. Mm -hmm. But I know very few words. My grandkids probably know as much as I know. One granddaughter, especially, she knows a lot, you know, compared to what I know and, and the other those girls know. But yeah, we, I wish I had learned. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever listened to any of your elders as you was around, when they speak Chickasaw and telling stories, the humor mm -hmm. is yes. there. Mm -hmm. But when it's transferred or translated in English, the humor, it loses its humor. Mm -hmm. And they could tell that story over and over and mm -hmm. again. It never loses, loses its humor. Yes, I still remember is. some of my uh, stories that I was told. And my uncle was, was the best one storyteller that I can remember. His name was John Puller. He could start with this long, and after a while, it'd be, next day, it's even got bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Brother Luther, were you used to looking at these kind of phones growing up? Oh, I can't even, I can't even, I have to get my grandkids to show me how to use those phones. <laughs> and I've got exactly. the little, I've got the little square the old kind. <laughs> when I was small then, uh, at Fillmore, I've never seen a phone. As a matter of fact, I didn't even know they existed, to be honest. But there was one phone in the service station. That all we had there was a gro little small grocery store and a service station. And I seen this gentleman walk in to the phone, and I didn't know what it was. He got over there and cranked it, <laughs> and, and he talk, talked to the operator. And I thought, what's he doing? And for his son, he said, hey, yeah, Fillmore's where I'm standing. <laughs> and he was standing. But, but, they didn't have the rotary? It was just the Oh, big, yes, they had rotary. Yeah. And I mean, that, the, one that, the one you was talking about the, in Fillmore. The, no, no, no. It wasn't no, it was just that, a crank, was and crank, then an yeah. operator came on? Yeah, or, you cranked yeah. it, and the mm -hmm. operator, I don't know where the operator <laughs> was. That, no. that hurt my arm. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, 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 how, that's, that's the first one I, I, like I said, I didn't know it was a telephone. Did you think he was just standing there at the wall talking to himself? <laughs> I didn't know what he was doing when he started cranking it and he started talking. I thought, what's he doing, playing or something? <laughs> 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 well, girls, are there any final questions you want to ask any of our elders sitting here? What was y'all's first jobs as, like, working people? As working first people? Jobs. I'll yeah. tell you what, I was in high school, and uh, we got $2 a 100 pounds. Wow. And I hauled hay when I was in high school, which was a half cent a bale, which means you had to haul two bales to get a penny. And I hold cotton for 65 cents an hour. And, my, my and I dad. complain about minimum wage. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you all for participating and sharing stories. I have loved them and enjoyed them. And girls, I want to encourage you to get with your grandparents, get with other people. Maybe they're not your grandparents, but it's just people that you know that are older and ask them questions because you will be inspired by their stories and it will give you hope to keep doing what you're doing. So you all are gonna do that, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'll see to that. Yeah. <laughs>